Hello everyone, my name is Kazuhito Okoi from Hitachi. Today, I'd like to talk about lessons learned to adapt visual programming tool Node-RED to IoT use cases. Let me start. I am Kazuhito Okoi. I am a software engineer in Hitachi. On GitHub, I am one of maintainers in Node-RED project. I developed a node generator tool for Node-RED project. And in Hitachi, there is Node-RED contribution team. We are 19 contributors and we have added over 80,000 lines of code. And in terms of commit, we have added over 700 commits for Node-RED project. And there are two open source project which are originated by Hitachi. So uh, we uh, developed and managed two open source project on GitHub. Let me introduce about our IoT platform, Lumada. It is our IoT platform to realize digital innovation with partners. According to the Gartner's report, Hitachi is one of the leaders in industry IoT market. There is the name of Hitachi on the report. And of course, we have used Node-RED in Lumada to realize component of Lumada. To make the IoT platform open, we have used a lot of open source software on Lumada to fill our requirement and improve the quality of code. We are using upstream fast style development. In this style, we are always publish the new features of open source software on GitHub. And in this style, we can get the a lot of feedback from open source community and improve the open source software rapidly. From this slide, I will introduce what is Node-RED. Node-RED is a local programming tool to create solutions rapidly. In Node-RED history, it was developed by IBM UK in 2014. And after that, this project was transferred to uh, JS Foundation. Currently, it is OpenJS Foundation and as a Linux Foundation. So uh, everyone can contribute it to the open, uh, open source project. Node-RED is pre-installed software in Raspberry Pi Linux OS. So uh, when we get to Raspberry Pi device, uh, Node-RED is available on your device. So it is good for a lot of users, for example, uh, hobby users uh, and students uh, who want to run IoT using Raspberry Pi. And uh, in company, uh, Raspberry Pi compatible devices uh, is, can be used to uh, real IoT use case in, for example, factories. Top right screenshot is Node-RED Flow Editor. On Node-RED Flow Editor, there are a lot of connectors and the user can use the connectors to create uh, their applications. We surveyed the number of Node-RED user companies in Global Fortune report. According to our survey, a half of global tech companies have used Node-RED in their production environment or they introduce Node-RED on their website. For example, Fujitsu uses Node-RED in their Columina platform and NEC uses their obligate software 
and uh, recently Red Hat released uh, OpenShift operator for Node Red. So you can understand a lot of user companies are there in global. Last year, Node Red project released version 1.0. Of course, it means uh, API is stable and it is ready to for production environment. And this year, Node Red project announced release plans, including long-term support. As you can see on the timeline, we can continue to use major version more than one year. It is good information for offline environment, especially uh, factories or uh, inside companies. Node Red supports various environments, for example, edge devices, Docker images, on cloud environment, and local PC or local servers. And this diagram shows system using Node Red. On left side, OT systems, uh, edge devices can be used to collect sensor data directly, and if the cloud environment is available. Edge device can send the sensor data uh, to cloud environment via MQTT protocol. On cloud environment, Node Red can store sensor data to the data lake like MySQL or file systems. On IT systems, if there is existing systems or external services, uh, you can connect it to the services via the test API. As of this year, there are about 3,000 connectors to create application. To collect sensor data, you can use camera node for capture camera and the uh, Modbus node to collect sensor data via Modbus protocol. And to control devices, uh, you can use serial node or GPIO node for Raspberry Pi. And if you want to connect to external systems, WebSocket, MQTT, and HTT protocols are supported in Node Red. And there is database uh, connectors, for example, uh, MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle DB. And uh, if you want to analyze uh, locally or on cloud, you can use analysis connector to analyze uh, sensor data or image data. And the last thing is visualization. Uh, to visualize sensor data, uh, Node Red has dashboard for visualize the data. In this slide, I would like to explain about the architecture inside Node Red. As we can understand from the name of Node Red, Node Red is executed on Node.js environment. In Node.js environment, there are two points. First is single thread. When Node.js execute program, uh, Node.js use one CPU core. And the second is non-blocking asynchronous I.O. Uh, Node.js access to multiple external I.O. Uh, Node.js use uh, the I.O. simultaneously. So we need to care about the characteristics of the Node.js. From now, I will talk about lessons learned to adapt Node Red. When we started to use Node Red in production system, we encountered some concerns about stable operations and performance. Actually, we have some op uh, some knowledge about Linux environment or Java environment in our company. On the other hand. Uh, we have no knowledge about uh, 
uh, Node.js and Node.red for stable operations. To solve the problem, we evaluated the performance of Node.red in our major use cases. Uh, there are two use cases. The first is the data management system to collect values from sensor devices. And the second scenario is system integration to call multiple APIs. Let me introduce scenario one from now. This slide shows about the details of the data management system to collect sensor data. As we can see on the right picture, there are 10 million power meters on houses or stores, and the data management system collects the sensor data every 30 minutes. And in the system, uh, we want to evaluate the performance in edge use cases. This slide shows the system overview to realize meter data management system. One meter sends uh, three types of data. First is meter ID, and the second is timestamp, and the third is power usage. And the power meters send the data to MQTT broker via the MQTT protocol. And the Node-RED servers retrieve the sensor data via the MQTT broker. And the uh, Node-RED servers store the data to NoSQL DB via the HTT protocol. Node-RED supports uh, both MQTT protocol and HTTT protocol uh, by default. So Node-RED can easily collect sensor data and save the data to other systems. As I said in the previous slide, we use default Node-RED connectors to create Node-RED flow. To monitor resource usage, we used our performance tool. And to compare with single Node-RED server with multiple Node-RED servers in terms of scaling, we prepared nine Node-RED servers. We used two methods to understand the performance. First is for a Node-RED single server. Firstly, we added 1.5 million power meters, and then we uh, evaluated the resource usage of the Node-RED server. And then uh, we added more 1.5 million power meters, and then uh, we uh, evaluated the resource usage again. In this step-by-step -step method, we understand the uh, limit of the single Node-RED server. As a result, a single Node-RED server used all of CPU usage before reaching our requirement, 10 million power meters. As you can understand the picture and the graph, when we used two 5 million power meters, the CPU usage becomes full, so we cannot handle all of the, the data in the case. In case of the 2 million power meters, the throughput is about 1,000 data per second correctly. But we need more uh, throughput uh, to fill our requirement. This evaluation is for multiple Node-RED servers. We used 10 million power meters in all of cases. As the first step, we prepared one Node-RED single server, and then we checked the resource usage of the Node-RED server. In the second step, we added more one Node-RED server, and then checked the resource usage of the two servers. Using the step-by-step -step scaling out method, we surveyed the minimum number of the servers to handle the data correctly. This graph shows the result of our evaluation. 
uh, in our evaluation, uh, we added Node-RED server and the CPU usage uh, decreased gradually. And uh, as a result, we understand the minimum number of Node-RED server is eight to a stable operation. And uh, there are no bottleneck in other component like MQTT broker or network. Based on our evaluation, we found that the throughput depends on one CPU core performance in a single Node-RED server because single thread of the Node.js environment. To solve the situation, uh, there are two options. First is increasing the number of Node-RED server to scale out. And the second option is using multiple Node-RED processes in many CPU core servers. For second solution, we think that container environment will be effective. So uh, we evaluated container environment in scenario two. From this slide, I will introduce scenario two. The scenario two is the system integration to call multiple REST API. It is web system to compare with uh, travel plans. In this uh, website, 20 million users ac access the website, and then the website calls the external website to retrieve the travel plans, and then the website returns the suitable travel plans for users based on user condi search conditions. In our requirement, the number of users is 20 million users per year, and we calculated the amount of accesses. The access is about 10 requests in a second. The response time is within two seconds in a request. It is good time to handle the website without stress of the users. In the scenario two, we would like to evaluate the performance to integrate with other external systems using Node-RED. This is the system overview of the scenario two. In this system, there is a web server to provide front-end UI for users. And the users input the search conditions like that and then uh, the front-end UI submit to the uh, search condition to the Node-RED server via, rest, uh, via web server. And the Node-RED server calls the 25 external website to get the travel plans. And then the Node-RED server narrow down the 10,000 plans to 75 regional plans for users. This is the system configuration in our evaluation. As I said, we used the container environment to examine the scaling of Node-RED. The bottom picture is the Node-RED flow, which we used. It is branched flow so it looks redundant, but it is easy to add the new additional REST API if needed. This slide is about how to measure the performance. In our performance evaluation, uh, we surveyed the CPU usage and response time. To understand the minimum number of Node-RED container to handle overall of data, we increased the number of containers step by step. As you can see on the right graph, average container CPU usage uh, decreased gradually, 
and we found that the minimum configuration needs six containers for stable operations in terms of CPU. When we use the six container environment, the response time is about 600 milliseconds on average. It is good response time, which we expected. Next, we considered about the good response time. As a result, we found that the good response time is originated from the non-blocking I.O. of the Node.js environment. As you can see on the bottom diagram, Node.root flow accessed the external I.O.s at the same time, so Node.root flow does not use the, a lot of time to aggregate the data from the external systems. It is the benefit of Node.root to develop efficient flow without tuning. In conclusion, we found that Node.RED has ability to adapt large IoT system in terms of performance, and especially Node.RED is suitable for critical system in response time. And if we want to need throughput of the Node.RED system, we need to consider about system design using container or VMs to scale out. Next, I will show the demonstration of Node.RED. In our evaluation, I explained about the performance of Node.RED, but uh, Node.RED is good tool to create application without coding. So in this demonstration, I will explain about that. The first demonstration is related to the scenario one. As I said, Node.RED can retrieve the sensor data via the MQTT protocol. In this demo, I will show the data collection by MQTT protocol. And in Node.RED project, there is good dashboard component. In this demonstration, I will plot the sensor data to the dashboard. This is Node.RED flow editor. Firstly, I will select the MQTT node from the palette like this, drag and drop the connector to the central workspace. After that, I configure the uh, MQTT broker. In this case, uh, it is local host. And then I type the topic to specify the data. Next, I select the chat node from dashboard group, drag and drop the connector to the workspace. It is default configuration, so there is no change. And then I wired the connectors like this. After wiring connector, I deploy the deploy button. And then I open the dashboard UI. As you can see, uh, there is time series data on chart component of dashboard. In this demonstration, I hope that you understand it is easy to get the sensor data via MQTT protocol, and then uh, Node.RED can easily uh, output the sensor data to dashboard. Demonstration 2 is related to scenario 2. In this demonstration, Node.RED server calls the translation APIs on Google Cloud, IBM Cloud, and Microsoft Azure Cloud. And after calling the REST APIs, 
Node-RED server output the translated text to the Node-RED UI. To reduce the demonstration time, I prepared some component for the demonstration. I will explain about each component. Firstly, I pasted Japanese text to the inject node to start Node-RED flow. And orange object is post data to the Google Cloud. It is JSON format. And the second object is post data for IBM Cloud Translator. And the third object is post data for Azure Translator. Using the orange object, Japanese uh, text is inserted to the post data. As the next step, I used the HTTP request connector. It is connector to retrieve the data from the REST APIs. I drag and drop it to the central workspace, and then I wired the connectors. After that, I configure the endpoint setting. Firstly, I opened the setting for Google Cloud. Firstly, I selected HTTP method as post, and then I pasted the endpoint of the REST API. After that, I copied API key and then I pasted the API key to the setting. Finally, I changed the output format as JSON format. And secondary, I configure for IBM Cloud. HTTP method is post I selected and I pasted the endpoint. And finally, I changed, copied the API key, and I pasted the API key. Next, I changed the HTTP request component for Azure Translator. HTTP method is post and URL I pasted. Azure Translator has a uh, Header, header to set the API, so I used the uh, change connector to set the API to the header. And then I clicked the deploy button to deploy the flow to the server side. And then I start the uh, Node-RED connector. As you can see, there is the English translation of the Japanese translation. These are the same result. In this demonstration, I hope that you understand Node-RED can easily absorb the differentiation between the REST APIs and easy to connect to the other services. 
From this slide, I will explain about recent contributions from Hitachi to Nodlet project. The first is standalone Nodlet. It is desktop application version of Nodlet, and it includes Node.js, uh, Nodlet connectors, and Chromium engine. All of the uh, components are included uh, in the installer, so a uh, beginner user can install the Nodlet without command line operation. And uh, uh, it is easy to upgrade for offline environment. Uh, we want to use the uh, standalone Nodlet for uh, offline environment inside a factory. So we suggested and developed the project. The second is the automated UI testing. Traditionally, Nodlet community had no method to test the browser UI to avoid degrade. So we suggested the automated UI testing for community and we developed the method. This is the demo about the automated UI testing. On browser stack environment, automated UI testing executes the UI test on matrix of OS and browser environments. Browser stack environment has many versions of browsers. Using browser stack environment, we can automatically create supported version list for each version of Node-RED. In this slide, I will introduce Node Generator, which is a sub-project of Node-RED project. And the Node Generator is a command line tool to generate custom Node-RED connector from OpenAPI specification or other sources. If open API document of partner APIs or Hitachi original APIs, the node generator automatically create their original Node-RED connector from the open API document. On the internet, there is good example of node generator. For example, Cisco uses node generator to create a custom connector to connect to Cisco Meraki dashboard. And the IBM website, there is good example to connect to their original AI Docker container using node generator. This is the enhancement of node generator. My colleague expanded the use case of the node generator in WC activities, and uh, he created uh, the template for Web of Things description. Recently, we started to suggest auto population server to generate a custom connector of edge devices around the server. Using this uh, server, Node-RED can easily create the custom connector from the devices around Node-RED. For Node-RED dashboard, we are always create custom UI connectors to visualize various data. For example, table UI connector to visualize table data and uh, list connector and uh, Vega connector. And uh, recently, we started to develop a 3D UI connector to visualize 3D object on Node-RED dashboard. On the internet, there is a good example using table UI connector. Recently, the Linux Foundation, Guerrero, and IBM announced the new Earthquake RE running system as open source project. In this project, uh, my table UI connector is used. So we can see the uh, table UI on the dashboard. This slide explains about incoming message control. Based on our experience in performance tuning, 
we found that the each connector has large Q because of many access from outside. To solve the situation, we will contribute to the documentation how to use the date limit. This year, we contributed to the flow development guideline. This guideline contains know-how about how to create the nodelet flow based on our experience. Thanks to adding the document by IBM, this document is available on the official Nodelet website. Finally, I introduce our activities to expand open source community. We published articles about Nodelet on websites. Recently, we wrote two articles about Nodelet to Linux Foundation blog, linux.com. And I wrote the Medium blog about how to use the node generator. In Japan, there is good Node-RED user community. So with the community, we always hold Node-RED meetups in Japan. And uh, as you know, there is Hacktober event in October. So to uh, increase the number of Node-RED committers, uh, we hold Hacktober event for contribution on GitHub. And uh, uh, at the beginning of this year, we hold Node-RED uh, version 1.0 introduction for Node-RED user community. We also publish Node-RED books with community members. Currently, we published three introdu introductory books about Node-RED. And we wrote five articles from Hitachi for monthly magazines. And recently, uh, IBM employees have a plan to publish Node-RED book in English. So we contributed to the Node-RED book as one of tech reviewers. The last slide about the global conference we have organized the annual Node-RED conference with community members. And last year, uh, we hold Node-RED Con Tokyo at uh, Hitachi's conference hall. And uh, a lot of attendees and speakers uh, joined the conference. This year, uh, because of COVID-19 problem, uh, this conference uh, is changed to online conference. And but uh, thanks to announcement from OpenJS Foundation blog, a lot of attendees joined the conference from worldwide. If you are interested in the developer community or user community, please join the community. That's all. Let me close my session from now. I'm glad if you started to use Node-RED by my session. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day.